We're here at Primitive Predators at my buddy Kyle's place, and we're gonna do an amazing tour of his entire facility. And he has a $10 million collection of crocodiles. And the first enclosure is actually one of my favorite crocodilians, the Cuban crocodile. This is a young female Cuban crocodile. She didn't get along with buddies, so unfortunately she's the only one in here, but. Wow, she's got a big enclosure for one a Cuban croc. One. So we're gonna be doing some introductions, a little better introduction with the uh, enclosures over there. Hopefully she'll get along with them, and there'll be more Cubans in here in the future. Kyle that's not. Cubans are absolutely stunning. Look at that female right there. Unbelievable, athletic, great animals. So many incredible crocodilians here. And then the last time we were actually here, we saw these for the very first time, and they're just maybe more impressive now. Of course, these are the pie Nile. Unbelievable. Kyle, this one is looking so good. This is the boy here. This is a female. This is the female here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So the male is, they're, they're both getting some size on them for sure ever since they got here. They look good. You know, they look awesome. And they're getting along a great sign, you know, oh especially if we want to produce these beautiful animals in the future. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She is really stunning. I mean, I can't believe how good she's looking. Wow. You really see the difference in the eyes here, you know. Next up, we have one of my favorite enclosures. It's actually a bunch of Nile crocodiles that are half grown here. So they're, uh, you know, four, four and a half foot. They're super energetic at this size. We're going to go ahead and throw some food in with them. It's going to be absolutely ridiculous. Oh, you kidding me? This is the most ridiculous thing. so many in here they're so well with each other you know they do so well they could be so rough they grab each other but they're so careful they see the rats in the each other's mouths and they go for yeah. it and grab it they always want what the other one has yeah yeah you get to see that clap right there wow how many are in here there are 14 in here 14. there you go brother that was like i think that was 40 rats 40 rats 40 jumbo rats 40 jumbo rats, that's uh, uh, quite a bit of money spent in about two seconds. And as you can see, every enclosure is absolutely gorgeous. Some have just one or two crocodiles in it, some have multiple crocodiles. But look at how amazing these things are. I mean, this is as high class, first class enclosures as you're ever gonna see anywhere in the entire world. Next up, check out these beasties here. These are Orinoco crocodiles. How many do you have? This is four females four here. Four females. Males are hard to get, right? Males are hard to get, but we're actually looking to do actual conservation work with these four and also bring in a couple new males from Venezuela us a new bloodline and then a reintroduction program with the offspring. They are critically endangered. This is an animal that is very rarely bred in captivity so there definitely needs a lot of help for sure. That would be amazing. Gosh. This enclosure here actually has a little bit smaller now crocodiles that aren't quite big enough to go into the big enclosure with the big ones. You can see these guys are so interesting. Oh my gosh. How cute is that? Yeah, so these are actually that same clutch that you guys just saw. This is the old enclosure that they were in, and now the runts are in here. Oh my gosh. Will they eventually go in the others? They will, yeah. yeah. So this just gives them the opportunity to really catch up, you know, yeah. really focus on the food. I read studies that they found that the runts are actually absorbing less protein from their food source, and that's what kind of causes the slower growth. So this is actually a beautiful animal here. This is actually a golden salty or porosis. Look at that animal right there. Wow. Now, is this a recessive or is this a codom or you don't know yet? Honestly, I don't know. Wow. I mean, we have a male and two females, so hopefully we oh. will find out in the future. They're all adult. Wow. So uh, just got to, again, same thing with the pies. Just got to get them to get along. Wow. That's a stunner. Wow. The athleticism of crocodiles, the explosion that they have is absolutely ridiculous. It's amazing to me with guys like Kyle that are so good at this that, you know, crocodiles look so similar. I mean, don't you agree? Like, how long did it take you to, like, learn the difference? You know, ever since I was 10, I was badly obsessed with crocodiles. So it's, it's been 20 years. Then you start to see the characteristics because there's a lot of hybrids, even in the pet trade. Of course, these are Filipino crocodiles, which is amazing. Just absolutely ridiculous. And this is actually a Chinese alligator. Again, the thing that's interesting about this is it is an alligator. It's got the same nose feature as the alligator the round its mouth. But of course, it's, this is a bop full grown right here. They don't get much bigger, which is pretty cool. There she goes. Have two different shallow areas, a deep area. And obviously for breeding, a guillotine door here. Oh, so you just open it up and there you go. Yep, so put the male in the middle, females on either side. Oh, so so you can the male shift can them this way. Perfect. Oh, yes, a little feeding. <laughs> 
this is awesome. Yeah, it looks so beautiful standing up here. Again, all these enclosures are the newer enclosures that I haven't seen since I've been here. It's cool to see how this place continues to develop and develop. Still have a long way to go, you think, or are you getting there? Getting there. I mean, getting all there. these, essentially all the deep pile ponds are done. All we're doing is the tubs for the okay. smaller ones. That's about it. And then clean up the place, obviously. It's breathtaking every time I come. This is actually a broad <laughs> snouted caiman in this one here. They're so cool when they're babies, especially. They've got really cool, almost like Cuban crocodile type markings. It's really, really, really beautiful. You the only one in here then? Yep, Good. she is. You got a male that's A lot in. of younger ones. We okay. have, they're like sub-adults. With your breeding programs, all mm -hmm. conservation based. Well, like exactly. I mean, I want to put them together. Most likely I probably won't breed them because right. what's the purpose? Right. You know, they're not going to go back in the wild. I don't think these are endangered. I mean, if there's no purpose to it, right. why breed them? Because it's just more mouths to feed. A lot more work to set up. Yeah, so you're going to be breeding the stuff that you feel is the most important to, to Well, not even what I feel. If there's an end goal with it. Yeah. You know, if there's genuine assurance calling needed, by all means. If there's genuine reintroduction programs, by all means. But other than that, you know, I'm not going to produce animals just to feed the pet trade. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely She rushed us hard too. And then we have some enclosures that are getting ready to be done here. Again, you can see just enclosure after enclosure. I mean, the enclosure itself looks beautiful. Just some fencing and you're yep. pretty much ready to go, huh? Yep, and then we actually added three more. We added one more of this size too that are bigger because oh, okay. they're for Osteolamus, the African dwarf crocodile. Right. So this one you can see is bumped out a lot more yeah, a lot than they can really roam around. So these are some of the original enclosures, right? When you first moved they here are, and did yeah. it. And so you've got a, an alligator in here, right? Yeah, this is Trapper the American alligator, 12 foot alligator. Oh. Definitely remodeled this enclosure, put grass all around, put more trees in it. But the thing I think it's amazing about crocodilians is that they come, you know, they'll come oh, when they right. call. Of course they think they're gonna get fed, but still it's really cool that they, uh, right. they, they could come. Look at this. It's come a on. dinosaur, man, it's ridiculous. Wow. He's like, that's it. And there's no doubt that Kyle has done an amazing job with this facility. I mean, look at every enclosure. Of course, the Niles right here. Look at these. I mean, it's crazy how cool it is. Although this place is getting close to being done, he still wants to do some improvements. This just gets better every single time. He's really got a heart and a passion for it. I mean, look at every single one of these enclosures. World class. I mean, just absolutely incredible. Well thought out. It took him 20 years to kind of get to the point where he could design and have something like this and really work it out. And he's got it dialed in. I tell you what, I mean, look at this just enclosure after enclosure. There's no doubt that he spent the money that he spent on this place because it's definitely one of the cooler places down here in Florida. There's no doubt about that. I mean, look at how beautiful this enclosure is right here. You got the palm trees. It's just absolutely ridiculous, you know? And over the next several years, there'll be more and more crocodiles coming here. He's got so much stuff going on. I tell you, this place is a dream. There's no doubt about that. Well, I was just gonna do you know, just the tubs themselves and do a land area. But again, with everything I'm doing here, I'm all about natural, about giving them a ton of space where I'm happy, where I'm confident the animal is living a great life. Wasn't happy with just the tub because I mean, that could be a four or five foot animal in here. So I wanted to make sure they had plenty of space. So I wanted to make sure they had natural soil. And obviously too, is you got to take into effect being outside, you know, in the winter, the sun is lower in the sky. Did the land area, which I was going to do originally over there, they wouldn't have gotten sun in the winter. This will just be more of a, a juvenile grow out area. Okay, so four or five foot animals. Um, you know, I've even had a lot of calls throughout the years of zoos and institutions when a hurricane is coming, they want to place their animal somewhere safe. Well, obviously this is category five hurricane rated and this would be great even for like an eight foot animal, eight foot alligator. For if, short term. Exactly, if there's a hurricane coming and a zoo or an institution needs a facility that can handle category five hurricane and not worry about it, this is it. These are beautiful. So again, just plenty of room, be out in the natural sunlight. Right, you know, yeah. there's, there's no alternative for the natural sunlight. Exactly. So there's no point of keeping them inside if they can be out here and thrive. Remember when I mentioned about the Cuban crocodile going somewhere to be introduced with its hopefully enclosure mates? This is it. So what this will be is this will have chain link in the water all the way down here. And this is gonna be for three to four animals. Split in the middle and then split down here for the four separate enclosures in and So they'll get used area. to each other before being introduced to each other. Exactly, a chain link in the water, they can be next to each other. Then I'll have guillotine doors that I can open up and try this two, these two together, or these two together. Once they pass this area, then, then they, they go, go to go enclosure in. and then they can be together. But you know, crocodiles are brutal, man. All it takes is one bad bite and they could kill each other. So I want somewhere 
that's super safe that we can do proper introductions and know they're okay. Bought this property August of 2015. Didn't break ground for three years drawing, 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 redesigning. When I was here last time, it was just kind of just starting to get developed. You had mm -hmm. the, the, the cement down, but uh, to see it actually come together is amazing. Super nice pathways, super luxurious, beautiful enclosures like this. I am blown away by this building behind us right over here. Here in this beautiful greenhouse, it's amazing. So what do we have? Now Dabra tortoise in here and he's a rescue tortoise, but he is, he's over in his little hut. He's probably just hanging out. Burmese mountain tortoises. You hardly ever really see these guys, or at least I don't ever hardly ever see these guys. Another one of the giant tortoises. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Ooh. And that's the dad to the baby salties. I mean, unbelievable. That is absolutely a beast. Did your love of crocodilians start with the alligators? It really did. Yeah. I mean, between growing up in the United States, seeing these amazing animals in the, in Florida, I mean, every single airboat tour, the pinnacle of the airboat tour was to find the American alligator. And between that and also at the airboat tour facility, you could actually handle alligators this size. And really? between those two loves, it was a done deal. And now you've moved on to the big boys here. This this is beautiful. Yes, the biggest and the baddest. This is the Australian saltwater crocodile. There's no comparison to an alligator. They're just gentle giants. They can still do a lot of damage. Such an enjoyable experience to work with compared to these crazy, crazy crocodiles. And the other giant crocodile that you definitely have worked with a lot is this guy here. This is the African Nile crocodile. Absolutely amazing. Niles are amazing. And you have quite the group of them. I mean, you have a lot. I do. It's like the typical rabbit story where you start out with two and all of a sudden you got a hundred of them. Speaking of a hundred of them, of course, this alligator is one of the rescue projects that they're working on here. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so in Pennsylvania, I mean, it's where I grew up, you know, beauty and the curse of it is you can go to any reptile show and pick one up for $75. Not a pet, by the way. No, it got me into the door to start everything, but a lot of people shouldn't be having them as pets, buy them on their babies, yeah. and they get that size, and then they're like, what the heck do I do with this? Yeah. We actually go up there, tame the animals in Pennsylvania. We have a quarantine facility up there. Once they pass quarantine, then they come down here to Florida and live out their days here. Wow, that's amazing. It's pretty cool. It's cool to see kind of the tour place. I'm so happy we got a chance to check it out. Speaking of out, Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, you're not a